So I sought out to see if meditating for 30 days could truly change my life. And I thought it could, but disclaimer up front, it did not. But most videos that you see about meditation or people trying challenges include some profound life impact. And because I didn't have that, I almost didn't want to make this video, but I wanted to be very candid and honest with this video and show you what I did learn from 30 days of meditation and what I think I could have improved. So that way, if you want to meditate yourself and try this out yourself, you can learn from my missteps and hopefully save yourself some time as you start to try to get into meditation. Meditation. I am so excited to try out meditation. It's the month of April, so I'm going to spend every single day meditating a little bit. So really excited to try it out. It's day one. Stick around and you can see my journey and what I learned from it. And hopefully you can apply it to your own life if it's beneficial. To be honest, I kind of dove into this meditation thing head first, and I was a little bit naive for doing that. But at the same time, the best way to start anything is to just dive right in. And so while I wasn't prepared, it definitely put me in a spot where I was able to learn a lot. And the reason I say that I'm so naive about this meditation thing is that when I started, I thought it really all it took was sitting down for 10 minutes a day or 20 minutes a day, which was sort of my minimum that I set for myself in my head. And I thought that's all I had to do was sit down and do a guided meditation. But to use a fitness analogy, it reminds me of if you thought that all you had to do was go into the gym. But then you realize that there's a lot more to the whole fitness thing. It involves what you eat, it does involve your exercise, it involves your sleep, it involves a ton of areas of your life. And similarly, with meditation, I started unraveling a lot of things, realizing that meditation's not just the practice of sitting down and meditating, but there's so much more. There's mindsets, there's mindfulness, there's a lot of things to think about. All right, today's April 1st. It's my first day of meditating for the month. To be completely candid, I have no clue what I'm doing. The only thing I know is that I put out an Instagram message to understand tips and insights from anybody that has done meditation before. So I gathered a little list of resources. I'm gonna try one out. There's an app called Insight Timer that I'm going to start with. I'm just gonna jump in, start learning, and then move on from there. So like I mentioned, I just downloaded Insight Timer for the first day, threw on a guided meditation, and tried to get to it. And one of the reasons that I started with meditation and wanted to try this out is I don't consider myself an anxious person. I'm not in a position where I thought I needed meditation, but at the same time, I've heard so many people talk about the benefits of meditation. I listened to Tim Ferriss's podcast where he interviews the top performers in the world. And even though they're top performers and might not need meditation, so many of them that have a lot on their plate and are busy they practice meditation all the time on a daily or a weekly basis. So I know my personality and I know that I'm somebody that's a little bit type A, likes to plan a lot, I'm go, 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 working on a million projects and I don't really slow down. So I thought this would be something that's super helpful to try. Well, I just finished my first session of meditation and it was very challenging, but I guess that's a good thing. That means that I definitely should be doing it. I found my mind going all over the place. I did a guided meditation, which was nice, so it kept putting me back on track. Uh, but I'm really excited to keep doing this throughout the month. And after day one, I realized that I was in for a huge awakening because I tried it out and I was trying to listen to the guided meditation and I could not focus. Now, luckily, this very first guided meditation I tried on Insight Timer was letting me know that you shouldn't have to feel bad about if your mind wanders to different places because I'm somebody that likes to win, I'm competitive, I like to do things right, so I start to get frustrated if I'm not doing the meditation correctly. But this concept of being a little bit frustrated with the process and not being able to wrap my head around why I can't get this thing right really stuck with me throughout all 30 days. It was a big challenge at the start, but I did get better at it throughout. Day two of the meditation challenge. I'm out of town right now, so I ended up doing this challenge or the meditation today, just in the middle of the day. Uh, it's a day where there's typically a lot of plans and a lot going on, so it was nice to slow down. In the middle of it, my roommate here, he joined hey. me in. Uh, so that was nice, but uh, you know, good to know that you can get it in, 
slow down the day, have a nice break in the day. After about seven days of doing these guided meditations, I started to get a little bit better. I could control my mind a bit more. And that's one of the things I have to keep backing up and realizing it's not about control, but it's about just being present and being in that present moment. Something I had never experienced, so I had to just sort of figure that out. And I knew the only way to do it was through repetition and practice. So sure enough, after seven days of practice, I found myself enjoying the meditation a bit more and seeing some benefits from it. And one of the best pieces of advice that I received from a friend was to try to do your meditation after you exercise. And that was a great anchoring point for me because even though it's only 10 minutes, I found it hard to prioritize meditation. As somebody that's a bit high strung to find a way to prioritize doing nothing was hard for me to get used to. So by doing it right after exercise, my mind was a little bit more clear and I had a clear point in the day where I knew that I would meditate and it would be after exercise. All right, so it's April 11th and I just finished my session for today. And I have noticed that right when I finish, I feel really relaxed and want to take things slow. So I've been enjoying it and it hasn't completely changed my life or anything. It's only been 11 days, but I have been enjoying this. I've been doing it more in the afternoon or at night. So I think I want to start trying to do it a little bit earlier in the day so I can be more focused on it and really try to see if I feel benefits throughout the day. And not gonna lie, as I got to the middle of the month, that's when the challenge started to be harder and harder because I started trying to explore with different types of meditations. And also there was a point in the middle where I started doing Sam Harris's waking up meditation course. But after getting six days in, you had to pay to have access to the rest of the course. And I found those six days very beneficial. Having structure really helped me, but I was really cheap and I knew that there's all of these free resources out there. So I decided to not pay for the whole program. Looking back in hindsight, I'd recommend paying a few dollars up front and doing a program because it keeps you on track and it really lets you understand the aspects behind meditation, why you're doing it, what mindfulness is. So around day 15 or so at the halfway point, when I typically do a challenge, I see some sort of results as I'm halfway through. And that was one of the frustrating things for me about meditation is it's not one of those things that you can expect to get profound results with that early on, at least not for me. So in the moment, as I was meditating, I did have some great experiences. I felt great after. There were days that I would meditate though and I felt horrible after. I guess everything I had seen about meditation sort of hyped up my expectations. And when I wasn't seeing quick, profound differences, it sort of discouraged me. Because of that, it made it a little bit hard for me to prioritize it. I did end up missing a day or two in the middle of this challenge. And sometimes that happens, but I was able to get back on track. By about day 18 or day 19, I had a huge glimmer of hope because I had had a few great meditation sessions leading up to that that made me realize how amazing I can feel while meditating. And those feelings can persist for longer periods of time throughout the day or for the week. And it was just clearing my mind and allowing me to be more focused and more present in the moment. And just that little taste of it, that little taste of results was able to keep me going. And I was really able to buy into the idea of meditation. And I just stuck with the guided meditations. I didn't really move on to anything advanced because to be fair, in my first 30 days, I'd still consider myself a beginner and there's still so much to learn. So I didn't move on from them and having the guided meditations helped so much. As I got later in this challenge, I realized that there's so much importance in learning about mindfulness. So I actually picked up two books relating to meditation and reading through those helped me learn a bit more about mindfulness and it made the process of meditating easier. So just having that context of understanding what this thing's all about was able to help progress my progress throughout this. Also, I listened to a few podcasts about meditation and mindfulness. So just that knowledge, that learning about what you're doing can be helpful in motivating you to continue this practice as you try to learn something new. As day 30 rolled around and I got to the end of the challenge, it was a bit of a bittersweet experience because I was still at the point where I hadn't experienced amazing results from meditating. And it was something that I had done all month. So it was a little bit frustrating to deal with that, but I realized that there were glimmers of hope. There were some amazing experiences that I had with it and it was something that was worth continuing into the future. I truthfully do feel like because I didn't prioritize meditating, 
that it felt a little bit like a chore, a task to be done, instead of something that I was excited about and ready to enjoy. On the days that I was looking forward to it though, were the days that I had my best sessions, and then the days where I felt like I was trying to squeeze it in, I didn't have good sessions. And logically, that just makes sense. So one of the big tips I would give is block off a period where you're not rushed at all, do it earlier in the day, and have more than enough time to do your meditation because when I started doing that, I had way better sessions. I'm still very limited on my knowledge of meditation. I'm by no means an expert or even capable of talking about the concepts of it, but I did want to explain my experience that I had with it. You can definitely expect me to do a follow-up video on meditation. I plan to continue to keep trying to practice this in a more sustainable way, a way that I'm going to enjoy it more and continue to learn about it because it's very exciting. It's new terrain, somewhere that I haven't explored before, so I'm excited to learn more about it. So if you enjoy seeing videos like this one, then please consider subscribing to the channel and dropping a like on the video. It would mean a lot to me. And with that being said, I hope you guys all have a phenomenal week ahead.